Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, and this is the next episode in my fifth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy Series. And uh, I've got a lot of good feedback from you guys to go over. I'm going to go ahead and click... Well, actually, before I click next turn, I'm going to follow the advice of Tarsac and cast... Or start casting Paid Absolution on Carbanic here, which has been uh, notably missing that spell. Got to remember to use casting points as I can. Um, mana is a bit of an issue. I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, let's go ahead and click next turn and then I'll start going through some of the comments here. One of them that came from uh, a few different people I got from Jeff, Blurry Inner Vision, and Sarah Feingold all mentioned that I should be using Guardbreaker uh, for my Ice Queen more often. It would actually come in uh, somewhat handy in uh, the battle against the Archons over here. I could have uh, broken the guard of a Titan during the last battle, which is probably a more efficient use of a Frostling when fighting the undead since her cold damage doesn't really hurt them that much. So I'll try to remember to have that, that I have that as a useful option. I sometimes forget that she's got that. Um, both Arch Redbeard and Tarsac talked uh, at length about the need to build more shrines. I do agree mana is an issue. I just, I'm not, I'm kind of limited as to what my cities need to be doing right now because I need them to be doing kind of everything right now. I do think that as soon as this settler is done, uh, which will finish on the next turn, um, that I will make a shrine in this city. I'd like to get one here too, but I'm also building this city up to make martyrs as soon as I can. Although it does have, uh, well, this city is just kind of low on production for now. So I've been sort of spamming production uh, stuff because I don't really have anything uh, any production structures in it. At least I think the closest thing is maybe those, uh, maybe these haste berries out here. The city's going to have kind of crappy production, to be honest, but fortunately I'm only planning on making kind of low tier units in that city anyway. Um, comments from Jeff, a uh, really good one, suggested turning the uh, Draconian city underground. And this is sort of a longer term thing. This city here, Slurmthy has that vault of knowledge that'd be great to turn into a goblin city not only would that make the goblins happy with me which is one of my goals uh, but swarm darters with vault of knowledge upgrades are really really cool so i would love to have some of those i think that's a good idea um, eventually i will get units down there to do that actually ganon's army might uh, just stay underground and, and and take that city and some other stuff down here uh, while the halfling operates mostly above ground for now um, and hopefully I'll have more units on the way before too terribly long. Uh, Jeff also pointed out that Ordron over here could be kind of an impo important choke point. Um, it is a very forward city, and I do see the mountain pass there. It's not really useful for keeping units coming, like, because I, I sort of wish these mountains were more like here, maybe, guarding the city, or that these mountains were up here. It's not the perfect choke point, but I do see what he's saying. There's a road that goes down this way and mostly seems to be a lot of mountains to the south. So this right here could be a pathway for any units coming from this southern part of the map. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. I will take that city as soon as I can. Halfling's army will probably go back there once they're done clearing some stuff up over here. Um, one of the things that I really want them to do ASAP is clear that Ziggurat if I can. Um, the sooner she can get Chaos Rift the better because that's going to help with clearing a lot of these more tougher structures. Not even sure if I can handle that dungeon or not. It kind of depends on what's in there. Uh, I do only have it on... Uh, it's not very strong defenders. It's strong, so I might be able to handle that, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Arch Redbeard pointed out that Despair, or more of a reminder, I already knew this, but I didn't really talk about it in the last episode. Despair stacks indefinitely, um, which is uh, very useful for when you're trying to convert a unit. I could have tried to despair the giant a bit more. Um, I didn't, and part of the reason I didn't do that was because uh, the giant, I, I was afraid I'd kill it, if I remember correctly. But uh, I did want to just mention that um, you can effectively get a 100% convert chance on almost anything uh, if you can stack despair enough times. You'll notice I built uh, my settler, the road down here. Um, I I did the math again a little bit more, or well, I say did the math, I counted. I don't know if that counts as doing math, but um, this, let me get my chair up here so I can count these spaces. I'm gonna put the city here um, instead of here, 
and it will still reach it's still nine tiles away that's one two three four five six seven eight nine tiles away from the library so i'll still get that i'll still get the tomb i won't be able to get the enchanted tree i can't get both that and the library but i will get that uh trading post uh in there and i do want that because city happiness is always useful so um, in the long, long run, which I think is good to plan for the long run for these core cities, because uh, I'll need these to be very good. Th they will become, they will grow to the max size eventually throughout the course of this game. Um, Our Treadbeard also correctly pointed out that in the giant city here, I can't build the Lich King Castle upgrade in a dwelling. Um, I don't, I forget what it's called, but the one that would give uh, Fear Strike to monster and infantry units. Um, I can't use that in this dwelling. Let me click off of that before I accidentally click cancel absorb city or something. Um, that you can't build those structures in these dwellings. So uh, no ogres with fear strike, but that's okay. I'm probably better off building giants anyway. Um, and then uh, let's see, space flash gave me a little uh, tip uh, reminder that uh, alignment changes in two increments of 200. So. Um, in case anyone else was wondering, I couldn't remember if it was 150 or 200, but it's at 200 you become slightly evil, 400, minus 400 you become evil, uh, minus 600 I believe is pure evil. So yeah, thanks for the reminder there. Could be information to some new players. And I do know, I do know there are some new players who are just now joining. I got a, a few comments in recent episodes of people saying they just picked up the game, so welcome to the community. It's always exciting to see new people getting involved in the game. Um, let's see here, a handful more, there was a lot of good stuff from you guys. Petrifying Touch, Blurry in her vision pointed out that that might be helpful with conversion attempts. Unfortunately the unit that can convert is also the unit that can Petrifying Touch, but it could be useful for when you're trying to whittle down an enemy's resistances to spirit magic, just to have them hold still for a little bit so I don't have to have units uh, letting them hit me with attacks of opportunity. Uh, Tarsac. I already talked about getting paid absolution Carbana. Tars Tarsac had a bunch, like like ten different things. I'm gonna go over five of them here. Um, get paid absolution Carbanic, Already got that. Use Mark of the Heretic on the world map before tougher battles. That pairs really well with the fact that I just finished researching uh, Sacred Order Sacred Support, which gives uh, all my support units uh, the devout property. So. Um, that's going to apply to the Orc Priest, which I'm going to be building a bunch of soon. Um, let's see, what should I get next? Let me take a break here. I am going to want Exalted Martyrs, because uh, I'll, be, I'll be trying to make Martyrs as soon as I can. So let's go ahead and actually pick that up now, because I'm going to try to make some mar uh, Martyrs in this city soon. Um, Holmir showed up. Oh, this city that I was wondering about out here, why it showed up. Uh, Tarzak pointed out that, that uh, it showed up when flipping from AI to independent control. So apparently an AI controlled it and independence took it over. Then it pops up on the world map. I'm not really sure why that happens, but uh, he said that's why that happens. So in case anyone was wondering, I know I was. Um, Tarzak also advised me to wait on my necromancer hero, who is right here. Um, he's going to, he's at level 7 now, but in a couple more turns... I'll be able to get Inflict Ghoul Curse. I think it's at level 9, and it costs 7 points. So I actually, I was going to get uh, more casting points and get Dark Pact, but I think Inflict Ghoul Curse is probably more important, given that I need to increase the size of my army. So uh, I'm sorry, Archer Redbeard, I will get Dark Pact as soon as I can, but I do want Inflict Ghoul Curse more. And then finally, uh, don't forget to cast Embrace Darkness. Good call. I do routinely forget to do that. Um, I will cast that on this city. I think now I can safely start uh, doing that just so I don't forget. Um, mana is a little bit of a limitation right now. Let's go ahead and start doing something about that. Build the shrine. And uh, I want to get my settler on the road headed down there. All right. So that's going to be my next city down here. And uh, have a halfling army go down that way and start kicking some butt. I want to cast Paid Absolution on Garbanic there. And I'll just start... Oh, I could actually cast Embra Embrace Darkness now. Uh, do I want to do that or do I want to... I've already gotten rid of Beacon of Faith on my capital... I think all my other cities have kind of what I want. I guess that city will absorb, I'll absorb population there. I can cast 
maybe now it would be a good maybe now it would be good to just cast paid absolution again uh, because I'm going to be able to cast on that dwelling on the next turn and then the turn after that I'll be able to cast it on no two turns after that I'll be able to cast it on the new city that I'm building down here uh, I can see that they got Paragon, so somebody out there has a tier 4 unit. That's lovely. And uh, somebody got Prime Good. That's not nearly as scary uh, as the fact that they have tier 4 units already, but it's alright. We'll deal with it. Um, paid Absolution is cast. Still one turn until Siege workshop, sh workshop, so I will let that finish. Got the Arena here because of Orc Race, orc race Governance Upgrade. Uh, that gives me some extra happiness and a little extra gold. Uh, let's see, what else can I do here? I don't really need this city to do a whole lot right now, but generating mana might actually be a good idea. Uh, let's see, 170. I get more gold if I generate gold, because uh, the city just has more gold income structures. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think of what I could send after that city. So one thing I want to do is clear this gold mine. That's irritating me that there's still units on that. I wish I would have gotten that earlier. I guess, for the time being, this city doesn't really need anything else. It's pretty much just sitting there producing resources, so I'm gonna just... Maybe an Arcane Item Forge, actually. It costs mana, though, and I don't have mana. Okay, I'll just... I'm gonna produce mana in this city for a turn, just to get a little bit of a little bit extra. I've got a decent amount of gold for now, so... Um, oh, good! Speaking of gold, I got a, uh, a gift from this city. 339 gold. That's actually nothing to sneeze at right now. That's a lot. I'll take that. I'll gladly take that. Um, Alright, what do we got here? So the Orc Priest has... It, they, they'll be produced at veteran rank right now, but I can get it one higher. That's what I was working on, was getting the Dark Citadel, which I need the War Hall. And then I can build Dark Citadel after that. Wait, yeah. Yeah, it's a war hall and then De war hall and then dark citadel. The city's borders will also expand on the next turn, which is eh, okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'll get that Sphinx Temple in them, but that has not been explored yet, so I still have to work on that. Okay, uh, enough talking for now. Let's go ahead and get a battle done here. Uh, this that's just gold. It's not going to be items. So I'm going to send uh, I'm going to send the Black Knight after it. Should be able to kill these elves pretty easily. I would love to convert an elf archer. That'd be fantastic. So I'm going to try to do that. The initiate's also an option. Um, but I've got magic from my priest. I really want a good physical range attack. So let's see if we can get one of those guys. Fortunately for me, elves are weak to poison, which makes cursing a lot easier on them. I say that and then I fail at curse. Okay. That is a longbow, right? Okay, I failed twice. Good gosh. Okay, whatever. Uh, we can deal with this in other ways. Uh, but let's not lose sight of the fact that these are elf archers. So um, I actually should probably kind of guard my units. And then at least I should have just gone after him and started killing him. But that's all right. We'll defend. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll defend. I'm having trouble speaking today. We'll defend for a round, guard the units that lowered their guard, and uh, then go after them hard on the next combat round. Alright. So I want to definitely kill... I, ne I want to definitely kill one of the archers here. So let's do this. Let's move Ganon up just a bit. Kind of, I'm gonna let the priest soften that guy up since I can hit him three times. I've severely poisoned him, so he's kind of screwed a little bit. Uh, let's see here. I can get that archer in the back is in a much more difficult position to get to, so I'm probably gonna charge this guy. I can war cry him. Uh, I can soften him up just a bit more with this. Or outright kill him. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting that to happen, but alright.
So we move Ganon up just a bit more. That way these guys can finish him off pretty easy. And just give these initiates something to think about. They shouldn't be able to really move now. Okay, now I have more options to try to deal with these guys. Let's see if I can get my curse off. That would be, uh, that'd be great. Alright. Now, I don't want him to crit. Uh, so... What I'm going to try to do is inflict a spare. Okay, he is very despaired. I should... This should be... This should be easy now. Uh, convert. All right, I can f I can win at a 95% chance, guys. I've got 95% covered. That is good. Uh, let's just give more XP to the Black Knight, make him more absurdly powerful than he already is. Oh, I should have picked up another cadaver while I was there too. All right, well I got a bunch of gold and mana. Very, very good. I'm just going to let that archer chill there. These guys have places to be. And I counted this out so I can get those haste berries. And then I might make a pit stop at that tower. I think that would be wise. Because, let's see. In one turn, I, I'll be able to get there in one turn. It's going to take me two turns. Even if I go as fast as I can, it's going to take me two turns. An extra turn between that and that to get the haste berries anyway. I'm one turn too far. So... I may as well grab the tower. And maybe I can pick up a dwarf while I'm here. That'd be cool. Let's try. I, I feel like right now converting things is just something I need to do as much as I can. So let's do this. I think I just attacked with two of them. Not that it really matters in this situation, but be a little OCD about that. All right, so I'm gonna go for that boar rider. Dwarves are gonna be a lot harder to convert, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, what does inflict despair check against? That is spirit. All right, I think the best solution here is to just let these guys come at me. I'm just going to defend. Let him run into me. Okay, so I have a couple things I can do here. I think I'm going to just start off with trying to... Oh, wait. They, ah, crap. They used some of that guy's... I use some of that guy's action points, which means I can only try to inflict despair twice. Or I could always just use him to try to curse. What I'm going to do first, and hopefully this doesn't kill him. Did I get him with any inflict severely poisoned? I did. Oh, noxious vulnerability. That's the one that I want. And then that should make throwing curse easier a little bit 52 percent not a lot easier uh maybe now is a good time to use petrifying touch that was really easy um maybe i could actually just convert him now well in any case let's go here war cry punch through their shields a bit to do something before he dies. I didn't realize that was a prospector. I was thinking that was another Axeman. Alright, first things first. Let's try to get this convert off. So, I have I wouldn't want to try to inflict despair on him now. I've managed to curse him 
No, I have not managed to curse him. I'm going to try that again. Alright, so that should make this pretty darn easy. <laughs> Come on! 90% man! What is happening? Alright, whatever. I'm going to at least get his... You know what? I'm going to at least get a cadaver from you. I'm going to start leveling up another one of those guys. You will fight for me one way or another. Oh, I should have probably used the priest to heal. I think I missed an opportunity there. Alright. You know what? You hang out with the cadaver for a turn. Keep him healthy. Uh, I might actually bring that cadaver along with me. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I don't know who I'll drop. Maybe the Impaler. Um, I want to keep the Great Sword around because I really like Overwhelm. All right, well, I can get my cherub down there. Grab those haste berries. See what else I can see here, because I can fly a little further. Seven, so I need both of those movement to get back. A lot of open area out here. There's more lost souls to deal with. Just three of them. I think I'd just go this way. Oh good, more haste berries up there. I also want another cherub exploring... Wait, no. I wanted to see what was up down here, but that's okay. That can wait, I suppose. Not planning to do anything with that area in the immediate future. Alright, let's get these guys on down there to at least clear the quarry out. I'm also curious, what is in that dungeon? Curious enough that she is going to go check it out. A manacore rider and a bunch of monster hunters, that actually doesn't seem that bad. Yeah, I'm gonna abort. Well, I mean, obviously I'm gonna abort because I'm not gonna go in there solo. I think the problem is I want I'd love to cat's mark of the heretic, but you can't do it on a structure that units are in like hiding inside of. So that's sort of out of the question. The bigger question is can I kill the stuff that's in there? Honestly, a bunch of monster hunters, a manacle rider, and a berserker really isn't that scary. I think I could take them. Uh, maybe, and I could try to do it on this turn. All right. I'm probably going to want the Warlord in here. He's got some pretty good stuff. He's pretty tanky. He just doesn't have a lot of health, so i got to keep that in mind. Uh, then I can get my Knight, who he is very tanky. Uh, we'll definitely want those two. And who of you guys? Well, I think the Impaler is an obvious choice because the Manticore Rider. And then I guess uh, probably the Apprentice. Yeah, because he's got healing too. Sorry, the Spearman gets left out. Sorry, buddy. What does this say? Probable victory? What's my casting point situation at? I got 60. What kind of combat spells do I have? I want to review this. Uh, open spellbook. Well, I got Slayer's Doubt, so that's good. Uh, Divine Protection, Purifying Burst, Killer Instinct. I've got a handful of useful combat spells. I think I can handle this. I think I can handle this okay. Um, total mana cap, might want to keep an eye on, but actually, port attack. Now that I think about it, I'm going to abort set that spell, get my mana back, because I want extra mana in case I want to cast spells with the sorcerer, which I probably will. I think I'm going to need a decent amount of firepower to get through this without losing anybody. Hopefully they don't charge me. Okay, well actually that's fine. We'll let the dwarf run out ahead. He's going to defensive strike, which is annoying, but I've got guard breaker, so I can kind of counter that. 
All right, first things first, I probably want to... I don't really want to slow him down. I think I'd actually rather have him run right out at everybody, preferably the Impaler. Um, and then I want her to cast something now so that I can use her for combat purposes later because she does have Inflict Stun. I think for starters, okay, Sphere Protection only lasts for two turns. Uh, I think for starters, I'm just going to give somebody Star Blades since that lasts the whole battle. Probably, whoops, no. Probably going to give Star Blades to the Knight. Uh, let's see. These guys can heal. They've got the spell, steel, and magical being. It's not a lot here that's particularly useful on this turn, so I'll just have them stand there. Definitely don't want the Ice Queen next to anybody important. I'll leave her where she's at right now. And can't cast any spells, so... I'm really hoping that crossbow hurts. Really hoping he actually goes in for the defense. All right, he did. He went in for the defensive strike. Okay. Now, maybe I can lower guard of two units. I don't know that it matters, though. I'm going to I'm not going to take the attack of opportunity. I'm just going to do this right here. Uh all right. And that not only not, that also turns him around too. So that's perfect. And there's an impaler standing right there. Although I think I'm going to charge him with the knight instead. The knight can probably outright kill him now. Okay. Let's do that. 1 2 3 and devastating charge. Not quite but the Impaler can finish that. Alright, the Impaler took some damage there. The Knight also took some damage. I think I'm going to heal the Knight. I don't know. If they all ran in and went after that Impaler, they could probably kill it. I don't know that they could do the same to the Knight. I think he's got just too much armor. Wait, the Knight is actually down... Harmonizing energy heals for 30 health. That would get the knight back to just about full. And then there's also the frost, like, the frost queen. She's actually more vulnerable than the knight is. I think what I'm going to do, give the frost queen sphere of protection. Actually, first, I'm going to make sure that the halfling is well out of range of most of those guys way tucked back here in a corner. We don't want any nasty surprises with one of our heroes. We'll cast Sphere of Protection on the Frost Queen. And I'll go ahead and heal the Knight, I think. And Karzin can stand here on def- oh wait, no. I don't want him there on defense because of the Frost Queen. I'll put him I'll just put him here on defense, I think. Actually, I'll put him here. On defense, I think he'll be okay. Yeah, they're not gonna hand they're not gonna be able to do much to him. I just sort of trying to block their view of that impaler. Ah, uh, they're gonna kill my apprentice. That sucks. Ah uh, well, easy come, easy go, I guess. Still probably worth it to clear this dungeon, although I didn't really need to clear it quite this early. Ah, okay. Um, well, I should be able to finish this without anybody else dying pretty easily. In fact, while well, you've got that buff active, you may as well do that. So he can't do anything. Might be able to stun him. Alright, cool. I 
think I will have the orc go like this, wrap around to avoid getting hit by sphere protection. And then he's probably just going to go straight out and fight that guy. Yeah. No problem for him. Man, he's, he's tough with that shield. Just got to watch out for flank attacks. All right, let's keep inching her closer. I do want to try to rack up some XP for her, so keep scoring hits on that unit. That ought to be the end for him. Man, that's a healer down, though. I didn't think about that. Well, I guess at least she's got healing. Finish him. Have her probably heal herself. And I'll let the halfling finish off that last unit. Goodbye, sir. Well, R.I.P. Draconian Apprentice. That is a shame. Oh, but I got a much nicer things to replace it. Okay, there's a silver lining after all, guys. An Orc Shock Trooper and a Draconian Flyer. That is very, very welcome news. Um, I got a feeling that Shock Trooper is... Both of those might end up hanging out with the Tigran Warlord. That's going to make this next battle coming up quite a bit easier. Uh, it was worth clearing the dungeon after all. I'll gladly trade uh, an apprentice for those units. Alright, I believe the uh, cherub here was heading down this way. It's probably going to run into bandits and crap that are going to kill it. I think I'm going to keep it on the lava for a little longer. For that reason. Alright, and I got these guys to help out. I can actually position them to where they're in a somewhat useful spot for the upcoming battles. Probably right there, because I think I'll have everybody else get back on the road. Just stack up. Alright, that is, uh, I'm okay with that, that's good. A couple more turns, I'll have my new city up. Let's see here. Uh, I was casting Paid Absolution again. I was going to put it on the Giant Dwelling, so we'll reactivate that and head to the next turn. At least this episode hasn't been all bad. There's been some bad, not all bad. Failing a 95% convert chance was kind of salty, but at least there's kind of a silver lining to this one. Last episode was just rough all around. There just wasn't a whole lot of good stuff going on. I did capture the giant dwelling though, so I guess that's good. And that will be in my empire on the next turn. So I see spiders like this. I'm so used to playing a druid that I think, ooh, befriend animal, but I actually don't have anybody with befriend animal. Passed up on the druid earlier, so that's okay. I will uh, eat my choices and move on. Hey, if I'm lucky, I might be able to grab another work shock. Oh, wait, no. I can't. Uh, Ganon's off elsewhere. I would totally try to convert him if Ganon's army was here. Can do that. Eventually, though, it might be worth making some... Uh, some support units, uh, not support units in general, um, evangelists. That way I can convert some more things. Alright, so I know how to handle these nerds. Uh, come on over, guys. Actually, there might be a fantastic corner for me to sit in over here anyway. That just make this all a lot easier. Is this what I think it is? Uh, it's not perfect. I think I'll just do this the way I talked about a few episodes ago that Arch Redbeard was telling me about. This is a pretty easy opportunity to do it. I should be fine. As long as I hold my ground here. They're actually really dumb about that. All 
Alright, I win. And that's three less lost souls that this world has to worry about. I feel like I could retire at this point. Ah, the orcs have a quest way out somewhere where I can't do anything about it. Wow, with some nice rewards though. Whoa, those are some very nice rewards. Ah. They want me to... Wait. They want me to burn down that Tigran city? Oh, man. Those are some tempting rewards. I mean, they're, they're really kind of making me consider that. And I don't really have to go far. Ganon's army is going to be operating in this area. I could pop down the cave entrance, help the goblins. Uh, oh, wait, maybe, maybe he's a little further. Hang on. Where, where is Ganon's army? Ganon's army is down here. There they are. So they're going to be coming up this way. The city they want me to go after is way up here. So that actually is quite a bit out of my way. Ganon's army's got other stuff to do is the problem. I think I'd rather just pay to vassal these orcs. Rather than starting a quest. That is... I love that shield. That would be fantastic for the necromancer. Like, perfect for the necromancer. But... Getting up there is just not going to be easy. And it would basically have to decide between this or or having Ganon's army stick to my original plan of going underground, going after the Draconian city. Uh, I'm going to stick to the original plan. As tempting as that is, it's probably not worth all the fuss for just an item. I'm going to decline just can't spend resources to get anything up there that soon but i will go ahead and make them my vassal on this turn which is actually maybe a better decision anyway because just like that i'm getting all this extra mana and gold per turn if i had i waited i'd be missing out on all that all those resources so still probably a better decision i think all right got a shrine here so that's a little extra mana per turn um, I may as well grab a temple in this city too, just because man has been an issue while I have some extra, um, because I don't think that I'm going to stop to build a shrine here quite yet. I think I'm going to grab the Master's Guild first. Any production this city can get is sorely needed. It's only at 63. The Master's Guild will add 15, and that'll also let me build a shrine in one turn too, so... I'm tempted to hurry production of that Master's Guild, actually. Extra 150 gold minus 100 happiness for five turns, but... Oh wait, they're only at... They're only at happy 284? I thought that said... I thought that said 384. Why does the happiness go down when you start to build something? By 100? What's going on here? Is this some mechanic I don't know about? Base happiness content, race happiness happy, sanctified sites like terrain. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Base happiness content goes from... It goes to zero. Maybe they just like not building something? I don't really know why that happens that way. Uh, well, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to spend the extra money. Or slow down the happiness. Honestly, I actually probably need to keep that city as happy as possible because growth is so important. So. All right, let's see. I've got uh, multiple things I could cast uh, Sanctif or Paid Absolution on. For now, I'm actually going to cast it on my new vassal city. Get some extra gold there and start casting it again. That does put me down to 33, though, so maybe I want to wait until the end of the turn in case I need magic for other stuff. I probably will be okay, though. Let's bring this army down around here. And I actually want to send the builder off to go do other things elsewhere. Um, he's going to go over here and build a fort. I can't actually do anything with the fort yet, but the rest of my army is going to go over there and, and clear at least the mines next, uh, next turn, if not possibly the ziggurat. Depends on how much XP I can rack up on these new units in the coming battles here. So yeah, fort over there, 
and then I'll send the builder back to do something else. I said, ah, crap. I could have built a fort there. I forgot. I'm going to apologize in advance to Arch Redbeard, who would no doubt point that out to me. <laughs> I should have built a fort there uh, for this new city. That was a mistake. And I had the perfect opportunity to do it and just didn't do it. Ah, oh, nuts. Okay, well, make the most of it, I suppose. Just got to remember to put forts where I'm building cities. I need to hardwire that into my head. All right. Let's get everybody gathered around for some fun with the enchanting tree. Who should attack? Nobody here has wetlands walking, so we'll just go with the unit that has the most movement, I guess. Now, one of the things, there's two goals I have here. One is to maximize XP on um, on my sorcerer as much as I can. So I want to buff units. I want to cast spells. I want her to be leveling up like as much as absolutely possible. So let's like give him star blades. I'm actually going to move some units into position where I can start the battle quit pretty quickly, but I may spend the next three turns just buffing units just to give her extra XP. And then secondarily, I want to give these guys XP, especially that shock trooper. The sooner I can get Chaos Rift on her, the better. Let's give that to the Knight. Let's give this to Tarzan. I gotta, I gotta remember, I got two more battles with her to get through. So maybe I want to save a Star Blades for somebody else. Although I think I just used... Now I've got a little bit more casting points. We'll, we'll wait. Uh, to do anything else. Let's move in range of their attacks and try to lure them. Probably with the knight. He's by far the tankiest unit I've got here. Do any of them do fire damage? A little bit. And the draconian in the back. So I'll have to be careful with the ice queen here. Some setup kind of like this, I think. Should be alright. He might, actually, he might run over and firebomb every... Yep, that's exactly what he's going to do. Alright, let's see here. Oh, I love Tigrants. They can move so far. <laughs> One hit. Alright, cool. That's a Draconian Apprentice. He is not going to care very much for the frost damage, so we can do that. Probably move here. And gotta remember, XP is the primary goal here. So I want to be efficient with how I do that. Uh, if I could get kind of range am I working with here? I could actually let the sorcerer get the kill on this guy. Or maybe actually I could probably arrange for her to get the kill on that node serpent, actually. If I move around like this, I can really beat it up pretty bad. How much damage would she do if she just charged it? Not enough. That might be enough, but it's not a guarantee. 16 to 24. It's unlikely, though. Uh, well, no. If I did... now, it's actually probably about equally likely. I think what I'll do is I'll have him charge and hope that he doesn't crit or max roll. Of course he max rolled. He absolutely max rolled. Come on. Oh, this game is driving me crazy. All right. Well, then we'll let her get the kill on this guy, which she probably can't do.
What is happening? Maybe I can stun him. Okay, at least stunned him. But he'll die to... Will this kill him? Inflict chilling? No, where's the thing? Dome of Frost. He might die from that effect from the Ice Queen. We'll see. I hope not. All right, well, let's just get, uh, yeah, he died. Do not kill my shock trooper. That's not okay. All right, could you maybe just like get somebody, please? Anybody? How about this? There, you got, you got XP. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot to heal that guy. I was thinking there was one more still alive. Short bore of the thieving archer. Uh, actually, that's not really bad for my sorcerer. Wouldn't mind her having razor projectiles. Why don't you drop that? And we will give that to her. Whoops. Didn't want to switch it for that item. There we go. That gives her uh, the ability to make units, uh, make units bleed, basically. All right. Next up on the agenda is going to be these guys. All right. First things first. That shock trooper needs some healing. and start it as far away from the Ice Queen as possible. It doesn't matter, I'll just back up. Fight this battle on my terms here. And let's see, who should we give Starblades to? Well, how about him, I guess. Okay, polearm units picking on... I'm trying to heal this guy. That's my only healer. Come on. I can't harmonizing energy because I didn't leave myself enough casting points. Alright, well, she needs help, so gotta do something about that. If I can stun one of these guys, that'd be... Remarkably convenient. They're orcs, so they're at least easy to stun. Then I have to do something about him. And they have tireless, so I actually... Crap. That could leave Karzin in a bad spot. Don't know if I want to risk that. I might have her heal herself, actually. I like the position she's in, okay. I'm actually have Karzin go over here and use his crossbow instead, because I don't want to just have that shock trooper come wreck his face from behind. Uh, let's see, maybe I can get him with something else. No, I really can't. I could try to soften him up a bit. I mean, he can't really move. I think that's a good spot for him. Just get in the way of that shark tr shock trooper as much as I can. Um, also, don't really want him going up and hitting her either, so... Put the impaler there, the flyer here and kind of nestle that guy in the back for now. Alright, he's not going anywhere. Alright, 
All right, I'm gonna let her get the shock trooper. Should be able to manage that. Can I war cry and maybe one hit this guy? That'd be cool. Nice, all right. Good XP for him. And then I can move him up. Position her like this. One in five to eight, that's six to nine. That's a max of seven. Poison spit actually seems to do a lot more damage. Oh, it's, duh, it's a single hit. Doggone it. <laughs> it's another missed opportunity for the sorcerer. I'm being stupid. It's like, why does this not do as much damage? Well, it's because it only triggers once. And I can't really stop him from doing anything on the next turn, so I may as well give the XP to, I don't know, maybe the flyer. Oh, he's been poisoned. Alright, let's just try to make sure the sorcerer can at least kill this guy. That'd be great. If you could, like, you know, not crit. Alright, Sh this should not be a problem. I don't think I can mess this up. Alright, here's a question. Does anybody else need healing? Or can I heal anybody else? I cannot. So... Oh, crap, I should have crossbowed. That'd been a little bit more XP. I wasn't expecting to kill him in one hit. Sundering Warhammer, that gives Guard Breaker. That gives Cure Disease. Do I want that or do I want the money? Right now, I think I want the money. Especially since I'm going to try to ramp up unit production before long. Alright, uh, let's see. She's level 8. I'm going to save points, because Chaos Rift is the ultimate goal here. Have them go that way, because they're kind of going to go that way anyway. And then I can get even more money from this. Oh, other hero can upgrade too. All right, now we have more than one unit that's really in need of some healing. Hopefully the spiders don't get lucky with their webs, but uh, thus far my luck has not been too great the last couple episodes. All right, well, at least she got a promotion. That's kind of nice. I have no idea how long this episode has been going. I think it's probably been an hour, about an hour. I can probably wrap it up at the end of this turn. Right. Let's let the, the units with strong defense be the ones to take the webs. There is one hunter spider, so I can't really control what that one goes after. I'm going to try to get the flyers here and the shock troopers in position where I can spread out and get a lot of stuff, hit a lot of stuff really quickly if I need to. Yep, thought you'd go for the halfling, you jerk. Well, that makes it kind of hard to pile XP on the halfling when the halfling is webbed. All right, let's figure out who needs to die first. Fortunately, these are just spiders. They're not particularly tough. Honestly, I could probably war cry with the spearmen and wreck one of them. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. That guy's actually respectably tough. Oh, and she's got inflict freezing now. That's really good. Can one hit that guy. Which allows him to 
just make darn sure kill this guy. So we don't want anyone munching on the halfling. Oh, I've left him exposed to the Ice Queen. Oops. I want you to go out and just ruin that guy's day. Oh, I didn't have to take damage from it because that would have triggered at the beginning of my turn, not the uh, beginning of theirs. Alright, more mana, more gold. Those treasure chests really helped out a lot. Alright, and then I guess the uh, next step is to just get everybody as far north as they can so I can go clear at least the mines. I'm hoping I can get the Ziggur out while I'm out there, but that's going to be a hard battle. I might lose somebody else, but for, like, what, 30 gold a turn or whatever those provide, I think it, it'd probably be worth it. So I think I'm going to at least try the battle anyway. Alright, and then you can level up. Uh, I probably need to give him his own army, actually. I'm thinking... Put the melee units with him and then give him melee command. Possibly defense command, too. Defense command is just always good no matter what the army composition is. So I think I'll do that and then give him his own army on the next turn. Might only be one unit for now, but it'll be something. All right, do I want to start upgrading the giant dwelling? I think I probably do. It's early enough in the game, still far enough west. I think I do want to do that. Um, I believe... I believe I need both of these structures in order to do that. So I'm just going to start working on that now. Paid Absolution cast over there. I need to start casting it again for the giant dwelling. What? I've already... Select production for Darlock. Okay, it was just a stale notification. Uh, I'm gonna want, at this point, I think I just, I want to get a little more gold. Mana's okay at the moment. Manageable, at least. Let's drop that Impaler from this group. I'm not sure what I'm gonna have him go do, but he may go hang out with the Warlord. If I can split that army in the southwest into two separate groups, I think that would be ideal. And then I'm going to have the Necro stick with Ganon for now. And start training up my new pet cadaver. Yeah, I'll have him start heading down here. I'm not sure exactly where they're going to go after this, but I think, I, I think one will probably go north, one group. I just need to get a few more units. Alright, and that's probably where he's needed most. Okay, another city. Dwarves. They're already at war with me, so I'll probably just leave it that way. Ooh! More money on the water. I'm making a lot of, of money in this episode. Um, I really want to see what structures are in there, but on the other hand, it probably doesn't really matter too much. I am about halfway across the map now, so I probably don't want to go too much further because I don't really want to meet the computers yet. I'll keep going this way. That's a pretty big independent city. Dang. And more gold, so I'll pick that up on the next turn. Uh, we'll go down here. Let's see what's down in this little corner of the map, kind of near where that other Tigran city is. Oh, and I forgot. I forgot about my longbow. Alright, he can... I don't know what he's going to do yet, but getting back with my other troops seems like a good start. 
Okay, I'm at the end of this turn. I believe I will go ahead and stop here so that if there's anything I need to do uh, before the end of the turn, you guys will have a chance to remind me. Let's see here. Let's Here's the overworld view of the map for anyone interested in checking that out. That's the southern portion of it. I can't zoom out any further, but there's the north. And then uh, if we flip underground, there's the north underground. And then the more southern underground there. Um, and my goblin quest, I do want to check the status of this before the end, but I think I am on track to get that. I've still got six turns, so that's plenty of time. Let's close that. Just make sure I'm not clicking abort by accident. Okay. So all in all, some ups and downs for this episode. I think overall, positive gains probably. Um, especially picking up the flyer and shock trooper from that dungeon. That was huge. It's going to help out here a lot. Um, and ho hopefully help out with that ziggurat temple fight coming up. Which I'll need to make sure I have plenty of casting points for. I need to remember to do that. But yes, thank you all so very much for watching. Thanks, as always, for all your really good comments and suggestions. I, it's fun being able to put those uh, into practice as I'm playing through these games. Please uh, keep them coming. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode.